breaking the wall of organizational ignorance. How visual language supports decision-making about wicked problems and social messes. Robert Horn, Stanford University. On November 9, 1989, I was in Pittsburgh at a conference. I was so surprised by the TV pictures that I missed parts of the meeting. Thank you. So my talk is uh, Breaking the Walls of Organizational Ignorance with visual language and uh, dealing with, in particular, wicked problems and social messes. I'm going to tell you uh, three stories about social messes and wicked problems. But before I do that, I have to say a few words both about visual language and about social messes themselves. Now, what am I doing here? There aren't any departments of visual language any place in any university that I know of. And certainly, no, no university would have a department of social messes. Uh, nevertheless, there are many of us who are working directly with this question. At, ten, at least in the last 10 years, uh, business and government decision makers have come to recognize that some of the largest issues, the largest risks, the largest unknowns and uncertainties fall into the domain of what we are now in some areas calling wicked problems or alternatively social messes. Uh, we define social messes as an interrelated set of problems and other messes. Yes. Perhaps the best way to describe it a bit is to give some of the characteristics of these kinds of social messes. They're complex, they're often ambiguous, there's no standard view of what's going on. They're highly constrained, they exist among great resistance to change, as we've heard, tightly interconnected. You can see the rest of the definitions are no better than the first slide. Great uncertainty, many value conflicts, often wrapped in major, major conflicts of interest. Why is this important? I think it is because messes represent the context in which business and government strategies are made. They are the underlying situations that produce what we call the uncertainties and risks involved in business and government strategy. Let's look at Here's a, a systems diagram of a mess. You can start anywhere in it and go anywhere in it. I start, for example, looking at the inner city in, the, in America, the connection with drug gangs, which connect to the U.S. Govern, government's war on drugs, a very expensive proposition, which connects to Oh, the country of Colombia and where the drug is growing and the war on the Mexican border that has cost 20,000 lives in the last three or four years. And Afghanistan, oh yes, that supply, the major supplier of heroin. So I could go on with all of these connections in greater detail, but it's important to, see, but you know, but the question, one question is, well, how do you even name a mess then? Well, I call it sometimes the inner city drug war, drug gangs, dropout rate, unemployment, prison guards, Mexico, Colombia, Afghanistan mess. <laughs> Thank you. But naming really isn't the issue although it does help us to keep remembering that we are dealing with a mess. The challenge is how do we usefully, usefully work with messes? 
our parliaments and legislatures are struggling, especially with the fast-moving social messes. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to solve all this for you in the next uh, nine minutes, uh, but, I, uh, but I do want to point out exactly uh, the, these criteria and, a few, and, and to note that we are not talking about textbook examples such as building a building or, or certain kinds of engineering fixing situations. And the big important lesson is don't treat a mess like an ordinary problem. Now, my next topic is visual language, uh, something which I spent a bit of time doing studying the, uh, the syntax and semantics of it. Uh, it's roughly defined as the tight integration of words, images, and shapes, each doing what they do best in a communication unit. And you've seen a great a deal of that in the slides in the presentation today. I'm going to show you a bit about how we've used visual language as well as group process to work on some of the messes that I've just been referring to. Case study number one, radioactive waste disposal. Everybody recognizes that it's a major issue. Some countries have done better than others. We were asked by the UK agency in charge of radioactive waste disposal to create some kind of an understanding of what was happening in the UK on radioactive waste disposal. And we created, among other things, a very large information mural that contains several hundred visual elements, several hundred verbal elements, each of them tightly integrated. It conveys, among other things, the 12,000-year plan that the UK is developing and is about to, do, to present to Her Majesty's government. Why, what was the purpose of this particular exercise? Well, the managing director said to us, we've, uh, uh, we've had difficulty aligning the whole organization around multiple aspects of this plan. Uh, zooming in a little bit, you can see the tight integration of the words and visual elements. The visuals help you see some patterns that you might not, and relationships that you might not otherwise see. The verbal elements uh, handle the various levels of abstraction. And as you can see from this slide, we s changed time, but it's very easy for people to do that. The first third of the, the left hand third of the slide has about 50 years, uh, the history of the nuclear age. Then the near present, which is the decision making arena for, uh, for managers and executives. Two or three years into the past, two or three years into the future. And then the 12,000 year plan. Case number two. This is an international case. We worked with the World Business Council for Sustainable Development in Geneva. It was a, an 18 month project with 29 senior strategists from major transnational companies. Uh, some of them here in Germany, Volkswagen, Vattenfall. The major question was, if we imagine a relatively prosperous world in 2050, can we actually get there? The way of my job was, this, was, was synthesizer and, and visualizer. What you can see on that mural is 350 milestones along 10 different tracks that the team of strategists over this 18-month period worked on and developed. On the right-hand side are 70 measures of success. What, you, uh, what Stuart said 
was, if you can't measure it, you probably can't get there. The, tr the tracks, some of the tracks are energy and power, mobility, agriculture, forests, buildings, manufacturing, governance, people, and so forth. In the, and, and the process that we used for that was to backcast. That is to start with the, the vision, the relatively optimistic vision, and then say what has to be in place in the 2040s for this to, for this to happen, and then 2030s, 2020s, and so forth. And in the, 20, the decade we're in now, the 2010s, which we called the turbulent teens, by the way, back in 2009, uh, there are 40 what we called must-haves. I zooming in, they are the, they are the yellow boxes uh, that you can see there. I'm sorry we don't have a, a chance to uh, spend very much time uh, discussing individual ones. Uh, but I imagine that suites of these kinds of murals, each from a different point of view, because there are multiple points of view in messes, can be presented in decision rooms like this and in seminar rooms in universities. That's one of the ways we will be able to handle messes. Case three. In this case, I want to particularly emphasize, it's a local case. I, we, we've now done a national policy case, an international mess, and this is a local county size mess in Scotland. There we used a, uh, both visual language and very structured a group process to get, which I will explain briefly. Uh, we had a task force of some 30 people who were working on the delivery of public mental health uh, services in Scotland, in the county of Fife. We, <clears throat> we presented them first with a uh, template of what we call a mess map. Uh, it's messy. It, it contains uh, what the technical term for it is blobs. Uh, we found, by the way, in experimentation that uh, blobs are much, uh, uh, much easier for people to, uh, to uh, work with than really uh, uh, tight little rectangles. Uh, we asked the group themselves to fill in what they saw as the problems. Because remember, a mess is an interrelated set of problems and other messes. So the yellow boxes in this case were the problems as they saw it. Got one minute. Um, zooming in on it. We looked at it from different angles. This was from the executive angle, which uh, looked at only the budgets and personnel, but not the real problems. A quantitative uh, aspect, a look, at, look at the issue as well. And then a, a rather vivid look that one of the um, uh, directors of mental health provided for us, how it was felt, how it was seen, how it was experienced by people. So my summary, messes, what they are. Remember this. And visual language can help you with the multiple points of view, the patterns, the context, and Put that together with facilitated group process, and we can begin the study and perhaps even the action research to help people at different levels with their messes. Thank you.